Good morning. Uh, Dobro jutro. So happy to be today with you. And then uh, some of you might be surprised that I am wearing tie. But uh, I, this is very symbolic and I think that it's a good introduction to my lecture on social capital because this tie I received from our friend Alberto who is from famous designing uh, country from Italy. So and I promised him to, de uh, to wear this uh, when I will be delivering my lecture. Uh, and so this is the last chance to keep this tie fit the thing to my jacket and so this is an example of social capital. He trusted me that I will wear this tie and so I want to deliver the promise. Today I would like to talk about uh, social capital, some theoretical and uh, some practical aspects uh, based on my recent uh, uh, research. Somehow I'd be delighted if, if uh, this click, is... Click on the PowerPoint and then the keys will work. Okay. Click on the PowerPoint. Anyway, just click the mouse so okay. you're on the PowerPoint. That's active. Okay. Now the... Now the scroll. Okay, good. What? I will try to contribute to our discussion uh, initiated by Alberto and uh, uh, Ivo yesterday on defining capital, particularly human capital, and I would like to focus and get your input uh, on social capital definition and its role in uh, economic development. Then on its measurement, might be controversial, but uh, I have been such brains here in this room, I hope to get good input. And then I will prepare, present the, the case. Uh, I'm continuing research since last fall uh, on uh, developing new methodology of industrial cluster uh, evaluation. Uh, and I am responsible in this project on uh, assessing social capital and the impact on the cluster performance. So we completed research in Poland and we are now finishing the first two uh, phases of the comparative research in uh, the state of Washington in the United States. Of course, there are many definitions of social, uh, of capital and coming like Ivo from the classical economics from Adam Smith to the contemporary economist, Nobel Prize winners, uh, Becker, uh, and Gary Becker and Ted Schultz, uh, I propose the definition of capital as uh, stock of abilities which produce benefits such as revenues, incomes, or profits. Or recently I was uh, impressed with very comprehensive studies on social capital uh, by Lynn uh, and uh, who defined the capital as investment of resources which expected returns in the marketplace. So, social capital as an investment of resources. So, uh, in terms of classification of uh, capital forms, I would like to add one additional form to the two, three forms presented by uh, Ivo yesterday, and it is common in economic literature, uh, man-made, so both physical and financial, <coughs> natural and human, and I want to add the social capital, I want to separate it 
even it's, <laughs> it's deeply connected with <laughs> human capital, but I strongly believe that uh, we need, uh, with the explosions of networks, networking, clustering, <laughs> so so forth of net networking, uh, we should pay more attention to this uh, phenomenon, particularly when we treat uh, uh, networking as an important form of coordination of resource allocation between market forces and the government. So, human uh, capital presents a, this is a unique form of capital which has ability to put together all other forms of, of capital. Uh, so, man-made land and this way create new values. This is the, the, the only creative part of of the whole process of production and uh, it's important to uh, remember that this is the key element of any production uh, process. When uh, we discussed from Monday when I attended the, the seminar, so I enjoy presentation from different disciplines. We try to find uh, some common language, common uh, platform. For me, uh, the, the, the value of the social capital depends on the previous investment. Of course, the, there is a, a, a human capital. There is a, a type of natural part of human capital, the abilities, knowledge, born, you know, which was transmitted from previous generations through evolution. But from the economic point of view, uh, the useful knowledge and skills and attitudes are the critical issues of production process. So, and I link this with the investment in building new knowledge, in developing new skills, in shaping the attitudes. So it's much somehow more narrow uh, definition. As any form of capital, human capital requires continuing, perpetuing investment. This is something what uh, we are aware in our academy, we are talking about continuing education uh, because the new knowledge is developing and the new skills we need to catch up, learn and contribute also to create uh, new knowledge. And this is the academia we represent here has a unique role because academia generates most of the knowledge and has a critical element in building human capital. However, effectiveness of this process of building new uh, capital depends on many circumstances, including political system, culture. We know that uh, there, there are some countries with censorships, we know there are some countries, due to religious beliefs, dominated in those countries. Children are particularly... Female children are prohibited to attend the education system. So, uh, the political system is important because it could encourage or suppress building new capital. This is what... Uh, 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 and this way, it could contribute positively or negatively to create new values. Let's move. And by the way, you know, because of education and knowledge, and the, the, the World Bank uh, uh, presented, and I mean, I'm, uh, these three forms, I, I, I was very much influenced at certain point 
by uh, David Pierce, who became my good friend, and I still have his slides when he was talking about these reforms and, uh, of capital and then uh, the, the limits also to natural capital, uh, weak and strong uh, sustainability, I'll be talking uh, tomorrow. Uh, but uh, he proposed, uh, uh, because we were aware, we economists were aware about the efficiencies of the GDP indicators, type of more synthetic of, uh, of economic uh, development, mainly economic growth. So he proposed I guess 94 to the World Bank uh, genuine savings which finally got uh, uh, net adjusted savings indicator which really combines all these three forms of the capital. So this is something what uh, uh, and the human capital is represented there as a variable which is changing uh, based on expenditures on education. And natural capital increases or decreases uh, are uh, uh, informed, I will be talking more uh, tomorrow, based on the exploitation of natural uh, resources uh, um, and minerals, uh, forests, and also including the damage of, of from climate change. Let's move to social. Uh, I will be talking more uh, tomorrow. I will try to put all these four forms together and offer an alternative to uh, GDP. Two basic approaches uh, we observe. I mean, the literature over the last 20, 30 years on social capital is really developing in exponential ways. But coming uh, back to the roots, I think that one of the first uh, was Berger, uh, who wrote about social capital as a private good, followed by Coleman's Portes, and Lynn, I have already mentioned here. But also, there is another group uh, uh, of uh, economists, sociologists, uh, uh, <coughs> political scientists, um, development economists, philosophers, who treat uh, social uh, capital as public or collective. One of the first was Francis Fukuyama. Uh, then uh, Putnam, by the way, he is a uh, fellow of the academy. We should, we should really, we should really get him involved. Uh, his fir uh, first name is, uh, I guess Gary, but I will let you know. I have in my notes. Uh, Phil Cook. Yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. And this is, you know, the, the author of uh, Bowling uh, Alone, yeah? No, this is the, uh, I mean the series of, of, of book. And also, I was influenced and we were working together with Phil Cook from, I guess, Cardiff, I guess, uh, from Britain, Hubert from Oxford, and recently, Carlos Roman from Sevilla, who treat this way. And so, I mean, there are several definitions. Uh, I will go quickly. Bourdieu treat as uh, uh, private good investment in social networks that brings owner expected benefits. Coleman they treat this as a, first of all individual good that uh, could be traded for uh, through the social networks. It's very interesting. They link uh, with the uh, social network and again, Lean. This is the. the, the type of the most recent and very appealing for me, the definition of social capital as an investment in social relations with expected ret returns in marketplace. So you see the linkage between general definition of capital and the social capital. For Fukuyama, this is a social capital a set of informal rules and ethical values common for the certain social groups. Putnam uh, 
assume that social capital doesn't belong to anybody, but this is how it should be treated uh, uh, as a public good, represent a set of social norms and um, civic attitudes uh, necessary for common actions. And Huber uh, defines social capital as resources embedded in social networks. Again, we have the issue of networks we discussed uh, before, which can be potentially accessed or are actually used by individuals for actions. Okay, I mean, there are other definitions of, uh, from OECD as networks uh, and uh, World Bank, uh, the, the group for the uh, group there, and uh, from, uh, Bestler, uh, mm, Three uh, social capitalist institutions, relations, attitude, and value that govern interactions among people and contribute to social and economic development. Very general. I, you know, and this are, there are some other definitions uh, that I will skip some of them, but however, uh, I would like to focus on Roman as social system of social relationship based on trust and working according to well-known rules. Uh, for to Rosenfeld, social capital enables, gives us opportunities to know who is leading to build know-how. So it's a very useful tool. I, we, my team uh, of Polish and Dutch uh, American researchers accepted, proposed the definition of social capital as a, I propose this as special type of capital resulting from investment in building relations, institutions and networks that produce collaborative attitudes, share norms and values, mutual understanding and trust, critical factors for cooperation with the other types of capital and thus contributing to sustainable development. So the trust, norms, institutions are not social capital, are a product of social capital, a result of the investment in building relations. This is something what uh, very often the investment is mixed up with the results. I mean, there are two <laughs> different things, you know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's important to be aware, and this is something what Stu uh, Rosenfeld contributed, we need to be aware that there are two types of social capital, positive and negative. And the positive creates uh, economic advantage from the point of view, which is a major force of networking, clustering, I mean, uh, the, Economies, I was focusing particularly because doing this and not cluster. But also, there is important negative. Uh, when there are efforts to limit, to join the networks, keep the information uh, within the cluster, within the network, and lock in. So, mafia <laughs> is an, the best example of negative social capital. But also we see some networks, even clusters, which are getting to get clubs. So, because I apply this to the cluster, I will, for those of you uh, who missed my first lecture, you know, it will be, you know, the, uh, the good introduction. And uh, those who attended, I hope they will forgive me. I will go quickly. I use the definition of clusters after Porter as uh, geographic concentrations of interconnected companies, specialized suppliers, uh, uh, firms re uh, in related and supportive institutions, academia, research, uh, and associations that are competing and cooperating, collaborating in some areas. There are, so clusters are not only for cooperation, but also for certain co co competition. So we have three types of clusters based on natural resources, local clusters which are everywhere, 
and trading clusters. From the economic point of view, or economic development point of view, trading clusters are the major engine of growth. Because, uh, the, you know, the natural resource class like mining or, you know, the forests are everywhere. I mean, my, not mining, but forest, <laughs> for instance. So, trading clusters are those which are focusing on producing goods and services to export beyond the cluster, beyond the region, beyond the country. Why they are most important for the development? Because they are the most competitive clusters. They have to compete nationally or worldwide, so they have the highest productivity. And so, so they bring the highest uh, incomes, the highest wages and salaries. So from a regional point of view, which uh, my project is focusing, this is very important to have strong trading clusters. Because the local clusters are everywhere, they are similar. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, those which are producing significant part for export, those are competing at the national or uh, international area. If we look at the cluster from dynamic point of view, there are three levels of clusters. I was talking about functional clusters and working clusters. And there is a emerging, the more developed uh, uh, economy, the more advanced, the more type of collaborating cluster, I could call it cross-fertilizing clusters, when different clusters interact. For instance, in, in the state of Washington, where I live, Minnesota, we have, in our state, we have very interesting cross-fertilizing from manufacturing, like aerospace cluster, to IT uh, clusters, Microsoft, you know. Uh, not many people know that over 20% of the Boeing production is software. Who couldn't happen if uh, Boeing couldn't be located in the Washington state. So, I mean, there are many, uh, this is something what uh, uh, I would like to uh, go. I mean, I, I explained the, the functional clusters are just the, the agglomerate, the co-location. Co in the process of development, we, we see developing type of clumps, you know, the, the process of integration. And then, then we see the working cl uh, cluster in which they collaborate, they are not only firms, but the, the supporting e e e industries and the related and institutions. And this is the example, you know, of the process. Uh, this is the original slide from my collaborator, Derek Andreoli, our former PhD student, uh, uh, collaborating with him, teaching together. And so this is how he explained uh, uh, the process of integration. And this graph shows that, uh, which is particularly important for Europeans, but also for our, in our states, we, we also try to support from the uh, regional and uh, uh, county or even city level to facilitate the integration of the clusters in our region because moving from functional uh, to working clusters uh, brings benefits to, to the region, making the industry more competitive and bringing them more revenue, so there are benefits for uh, firms, so this is type of win-win situation. What makes the working, was working cluster? Uh, the social capital. Social capital is the major facilitator of cooperation, which builds the synergy. The more integration, the more synergy within the cluster, and then it produces positive externalities, like knowledge spillovers and innovations. So this is why, you know, we call, you know, effective cluster instead of 
working for effective transplants. I have mentioned already that the third stage, you know, that, the type of cross-fertilizing clusters which are happening. So I try to define what I mean as effective cluster. This is what we also accept in our team. I define them as a cluster in which social capital reaches high level which enable all participants efficient uh, cooperation leading to generating maximum of positive externalities coming not only from uh, collocation so Marshallian or Mar, you know, Mar uh, uh, externalities but also from building collaborative synergy so this is the Michael Porter developed this model of, of cluster, this is what we call Porterian. If the, there is only co-location without actions, collaboration, the facilitation so the there are the Marshallian externalities. If we have the cooperation, we have associations. So we have this Porterian ex, uh, externalities. But also, if the clusters are open for cooperation with the other clusters, we see another type of uh, uh, um, externalities, which Jane uh, Jacobs described, you know, writing about cities, American cities. We call this Jacobsian after her name, uh, externalities, the positive externalities. So I, thought, I am talking all the time about positive externalities which really build the synergy, which make the uh, contribute to uh, uh, spillovers and innovations. How to measure? I, we know, I, I hope I convince you how important is the social capital, but how to measure? We, we hear a lot, it's more high, poor, low, but how to measure? I, it was... Uh, my, my the challenge for me for many years and the final I had the seminar I guess 2008 first and then with Derek Andreoli we presented at Harvard uh, the, the concept of measuring economic value on the time, based on the time invested in building relations, developing institutions, networks, shaping attitudes, and trust within certain group of people. So we build the, 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 the social capital from the basic social structure, from the family, through village, uh, firm, cluster regions, to the nation, also to, to global community. We, we see the, the, the global community, and even at national level there depends on the country, the, the level of social capital is not that strong. I discovered after my presentation that uh, Carlos Roman uh, from Sevilla, uh, regional economist, developed very sophisticated method, uh, complex indicator assessing the, the value of social capital. So we in our project, you know, we combined, you know, because I mean, we, we, we were thinking the same direction. We tried to uh, adapt the measures uh, and then uh, having certain resources, limited resources, we try to verify the usefulness of this concept. So what what was his uh, approach? Just you know, I will I want to briefly to present on two slides. He uh, regarded the following uh, key factors uh, influencing economic development: natural resources, labor and capital, physical, financial, and then. Uh, which were got in economic units and then uh, it was given technological level. So the fourth factor is the technological level. And then economic development 
there depends on quality of institutions. Again and again, we see the countries, many countries, the rich of natural resources, but with very poor institutions, which are leading to poor governance and waste, huge waste of resources. So, and of course, these institutions are from different levels, from local to national and international. So he proposed four groups of indicators uh, measuring social capital. First, measuring the strengths of associations related to clusters, to networks. Then the indicators measuring trust. Third group, uh, indicators measuring existing institutions. How are they regarded? Are they accepted or rejected? Or follow the rules or not? And the fourth group, maybe the most important, measuring the results, or measuring effectiveness and efficiency. So we apply this to Podkarpatskie region, which is in Poland. And here is the southeastern part of Poland, Rzeszowski, uh, uh, around Rzeszów, it's called Podkarpatskie uh, Województwo, so it's Podkarpatskie region, one of the poorest in Europe. So it's among 10 or 15 poorest regions in European Union. However, however, uh, it's about 2 million, over 2 million people, uh, less than 20,000 square kilometers uh, with relatively young population uh, with a, a relatively small urban population 42% so anyway and then with the most powerful aviation cluster in Poland, which produced 90% of aviation production. And this is the mainly, mainly for export. So this is typically traded cluster. And this is the, the pyramid with the major uh, firms there. And, uh, from the largest to smallest, and then you can look carefully, you will find that all major aerospace producers are represented there. In fact, they claim, now this cluster has uh, about over uh, 120 uh, members and employs uh, about 20, 25,000 people. They claim that each airplane, middle or large size, has at least one part produced by this cluster. So they are pretty well plugged in. So this is an interesting case that a very poor region has very sophisticated production. Why? Well, this is interesting history. Uh, Poland uh, had very dramatic history when we recovered uh, independence uh, thanks to uh, strong support from President Wilson <laughs> in 1919. Uh, so we realized that all our uh, defense industry was at the border with Germany. <laughs> In order to secure, we had to move to the central Poland. So, after Second World War, Poland moved west, but this region was in central Poland. So, within three years, huge defense industry was built from both public and private capital, including aviation industry. And they started producing really good planes very quickly. So anyway, so there is a lot of embedded knowledge.
tradition, families. Then, you know, after Second World War, you know, we, we produce, we, in, in Central Europe was the largest, uh, you know, uh, of course, Central Eastern Europe was the largest uh, producer uh, uh, of, of airplanes. And then uh, after Second World War, uh, the, 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 the Soviet took over and they produced uh, mainly the not original Polish plates, which they used to produce. By the way, Poland was ranked number two after France in numbers of patents, both aeros- aviation patents before Second World War. It's amazing. They, both uh, Poland and France presented 75% of all patents between two wars. So it was very innovative industry uh, with uh, a really type of new way of thinking. <laughs> Somehow this tradition uh, uh, helped to create this, uh, uh, this cluster. This is the cluster map of major elements. And from our point of view, we see the research and uh, development uh, institutions, uh, educational institutions, transport, uh, logistics, and so on. And so we, we do uh, doing research, you know, I mean, uh, particularly in my area, uh, we made three basic hypotheses. We check the process of cluster uh, uh, form its functional, from functional stage to the stage of effective cluster is strongly influenced by increases in social capital. Second, the integration process of cluster fueled by social capital has a positive effect on its economic performance. And the third hypothesis, the progress in cluster development accompanied by growing uh, social capital contributes to the sustainability of regional economies. We did uh, a research from uh, <coughs> both uh, surveys and interviews. We practically surveyed all companies uh, uh, from the uh, region. We got like 75% return. And then we made over 40 interviews with the leaders of companies, of supportive and related institutions. So what we learned, and we were asking them, among others, how much time you invest in cluster activities. Top leaders, there are six large companies, from two up, I guess, 6,000, uh, the largest, or 8,000, uh, they contributed 12.5% of their time for trusted activities. So we counted the rate, so we received 900,000 dollars in 2013. And then, you know, they, they held a regular mo- monthly meeting, they uh, established uh, working groups to deal with uh, emerging problems, uh, they uh, developed the training and the policies to respond to future uh, challenges. And the number of members has dramatically increased from 18 funding members in 2003 220 uh, this year. So, of course, the smaller members of the cluster did not contribute 12% of their time. But taking into account, uh, altogether we came to the number over 3,180,000 Polish floating makes over one million or around one billion US dollars. This is the value of social capital. They create from building relations. So now we are counting, we are counting now how much social capital was created in Washington state. We have five associations. Some of them are just purely lobbying 
but some of them are, particularly those from the small firms, they are really doing a lot of type of training activities and, and, and building understanding. So, conclusion is, investing in social capital supports the integration of the cluster and increases its synergies and positive externalities. Okay. Next uh, hypothesis. Uh, the cluster has been growing dramatically uh, in terms of the cells were quadrupling between 2003-2008, even during the crisis. And uh, the, um, this unprecedented dynamics is closely tied to foreign direct investment. In fact, all these large uh, enterprises, firms, are foreign-owned. 90%, close some of them in 100%. So anyway, uh, they, they we conclude came to, uh, to the end in general, what is very interesting, uh, uh, that uh, we just, it came from interviews, and no, and from the statistics. During this period, and the cluster exists, and that through FDI, over 60,000 patents were transferred to these companies from 2003. So, progressive integration of the cluster improves its uh, economic performance, but also improves the spillover of, of uh, uh, innovation. Hypothesis 3. The vast majority of aviation products and services were exported to the most competitive economies. Because, I mean, these are the Sikorsky, Pratt & Whitney, uh, Goodrich, uh, Airbus, uh, and then uh, the Safran, uh, the through Safran, the huge uh, French uh, holding, aerospace holding. So, somehow, they join the, 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 the global uh, supply network. And of course, it resulted in this higher uh, salaries of the employees, and then they contributed to the wealth of the families. And they created additional demand for goods and services in the region. They did not go to other regions to spend. They spent over there. You could be surprised how many shopping malls are there. Now, so uh, this way that these companies contributed to the, the, the local communities, you know, economically. So total sales uh, from this cluster exceeded $1 billion 2012. So, conclusion, progress in cluster development accompanied by growth in social capital contributes to sustainable development of the whole region. So, anyway, I know that we, we are doing this research in uh, the, our uh, state, in uh, Washington state. We are almost uh, completed uh, uh, the survey. The returns are not 75%. We'll be happy if we'll get 10%. So, uh, because we, we, we approach 700 firms, <laughs> uh, so it's much larger uh, sample. But uh, the, 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 what is interesting, I didn't talk about this because uh, somehow, for that to mention, what is in Poland, and also it confines also in American research, the trust, because we asked in the surveys about that, how do you trust your uh, partners? The trust in, within the cluster is about 50% higher than average trust in the region or in the country or in the state. How do they measure that? Well, you know, that it is, uh, do you, uh, we ask, you know, there were five levels, I can, the, the, the survey question. Do you trust more, uh, the companies within the cluster, and then there are other clients of them, and that we get this five stage, you know, I mean, uh, from positive to positive, one neutral, and two negative. So, about over 51, there is highly agree with the state, agree, and, you know, neutral. So, we counted that it was 
really over 50%. So I have the, the part where I have the survey on my computer, which is in Poland was even higher. Because there were more activities uh, than in the States. There was one organization, somehow it was easier and type of most, uh, more transparent. So anyway, uh, this is the, uh, we try now, based on the data we collect, we try to apply with my colleagues, mathematicians, econometricians, to apply the new theory of network, in particular graph methods, to look, you know, which strong connections or weak connections are better for dissemination of information or this uh, spillover of innovation. This is something what we will do this fall or maybe early uh, next year. We had to finish, you know, first stage and uh, the second stage of the research to, to get this data, uh, statistical state, to have enough data to, to process. And then, of course, uh, uh, this is, we are, you know, we are aware that we are measuring the positive side, how to build, how to shape uh, the value of the social capital. We didn't explore the factors which influence work or depreciation of social capital. Like, you know, if there is an affair, corruption and so on, the social capital could dramatically decrease. I mean, this is particularly in politics, you know, but we are looking, you know, here. And, but they, they, they try, you know, what, what is also interesting, and this is, uh, Contrary to most of the uh, European countries, the initial, the initiative to build the cluster, to organize association, that cluster is an economic uh, phenomenon. It exists whether you know, it's organized or not, you know, the agglomeration are done, you know. But, you know, we, when we organize, you know, to build this portelia, uh, externalities, so the idea didn't come like uh, in European Union. I, I, I was present in uh, 2006 uh, and I was keynote speaker at the big conference in Brussels sharing American experience with clustering because we in Washington State have over 20 years that type of uh, experiences. So that when the European Union switched uh, to deliver most of the regional fund to cluster development. And because of the results were mixed, better than before, picking up the winners, you know, in the region, champions and so on, they wanted to have the, 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 the research, why some clusters are working, why some not. And so they, 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 they you know, to, uh, in the perspective 2007, 2013, European Union invested about 300, uh, 307 billion euro for regional uh, development funds. It's huge amount. And most of this went through the cluster development. So, from that point of view, this cluster, they are matching, you know, they are shared, they are paying shares, there are matching resources. But initial money came from US American investors. They learned that it worked in the US, they gave them 600,000 for five years and say, yeah, guys, organize association. Well, association, as we discussed, networks help to distribute the norms, standards. But it was a good investment, you know, because, you know, they were spreading out to the cluster, you know, the common uh, um, norms, standards, help them to, to be competitive. So anyway, uh, this is type of uh, progress report. I'd be delighted to hear your comments and suggestions. We are still learning, but uh, we try really to monetize this category and put along with uh, human capital and physical capital, natural, to the equations. I, I will be talking tomorrow uh, uh, more about that. Thank you for your attention. And uh, question, please. Uh, 
Um, just going back to measurement and sort of like pricing monetization. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me we've got to the point where we're better at measuring negative, the, the, the cost of negative social capital than positive. Mm-hmm. And indeed, the EU has managed to do something I find quite extraordinary in my you know, study in Britain. Well, now, or at some point in the near future, prostitution and drugs will be counted mm-hmm. as a positive contribution to GDP. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other words, in Britain, it's going to add about 1% to GDP. Mm-hmm. Uh, prostitution and drugs. Mm-hmm. It will be added to GDP. It will be added as positive to yeah. GDP. Yeah. Um, and it's going, to, it's going to be somewhat about a, about a 1% boost in yeah. Britain's GDP. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a more complex economy that's into this equation. And is it? I, I mean, I mean, I mean, my, my point would be well, let's have an assault on, the, on the, 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 the costs of positive social capital. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And for those who, you know, the magic of national income accounts is a yeah. total illusion. Yeah. I have worked on national income accounts and everyone thinks, oh, industrial production is absolutely certain mm-hmm. quantity. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, Social capital is it's absolute nonsense. I mean, a lot of these numbers are plugged from the air. So, your numbers are no worse mm. than anybody else's mm. numbers. So, I think we have to jump into the numbers game mm-hmm. and for better or for worse yeah. and have people challenge it and say, mm-hmm. Well, if that's <laughs> what we price social capital positively, mm. by the way, I would deduct drugs, illegal drugs, and mm. prostitution, mm-hmm. and add it in as yeah. part of social yeah. capital. Yeah. And I think there's a time now to go. Helpful leather on this in trying to get attention because I think most people would say, You mean the way we boost GDP is we get our young children into prostitution mm. or hard drugs? And mm. The harder the drug, the bigger the GDP. Mm. Marijuana is irrelevant, mm. heroin is a beauty. Yeah. So it seems to me there's, a, there's a, a narrative here that needs to be drawn out, mm. which yeah. is about pricing social capital mm. and standing up mm. and defending it as mm. well. Mm. And deducting what I would think most people would say would be negative social mm-hmm. networks of prostitutes, mm-hmm. networks of mafia, networks of drug, yeah. uh, drug suppliers. Yeah. Thank you. This is a good comment. Yeah, to, to remove to, exactly to, to really assess. Uh, yeah, this is an excellent comment. Thank you. Yes. I notice uh, on the first uh, and maybe that is because. Clearly, it has to presuppose a social process which develops certain boundaries around the cluster. And that means there's a lot of issues that are not being more explicitly identified. If I understand what we mean by community, it's going to be the intensity of the state participators and the operations developed. To, 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 to energize those perspectives into operations of value. So, uh, uh, what, I, what I'm interested in is, you know, uh, do we have a clear picture of the range of participators? Uh, do we have a clear picture of their, uh, their identifications, which are not national, but now trusted in some different functional way. Uh, the specifics of, uh, of uh, the, the, the demands, what are the specific values? Are they purely monetary or are they values of a larger community? It seems to me those would be uh, important indicators of, of the new economics. If you don't, if you want to get out of the, the, the boundary of simply saying, well, do they maximize profit? Yes or no? How do we define profit? But if you want to say, uh, 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 how does it contribute to the aggregate value position, not only of the cluster, but the impact of the cluster on the larger yeah, yeah, yeah. national and possibly continental uh, community? So, uh, yeah. and then uh, uh, to, to be a bit more uh, clear on the range of uh, values that they can acquire. Yeah as basis of power to solidify and improve the performance of the cluster. And it's an internal accountability and so on. And then, of course, exactly how they're functioning in terms of 
the geography of the cluster or the institutionalization of the cluster. Oh, how does the cluster function when there's a big guy and crisis going on? You know? so, so I think those are, you, you can, I think, develop a much more detailed uh, configuration of the social process of the cluster itself. Uh, and then you might be much more realistically contextualizing the economic uh, component of it as a as fitting to larger. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, let me respond immediately. I'm, you know, because I try to stick to the limits. Uh, and I didn't tell you that one of the products, this is what my students are doing there and uh, my Polish person, will be evaluation of the shared values created by clusters. There is a lot of investment of firms in uh, from elementary school to middle school, you know, the uh, community development, um, transportation, the infrastructure, and also the, uh, the aviation cluster, because this is the leading cluster in Poland. They help also the other clusters in this and the other region share the experience. The, you ask also very important question. The value, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, the value of social capital depends on the investment of the time. These clusters, they have a regular monthly meeting. You know, the participation is different. Uh, you know, not everybody comes to the meeting, but the, 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 there is the venue and then the communication and the participation depends on how much you, you want to, to participate. But this is the, the basic stuff, basic indicator. This is the, the life living. And, but what they are concerned also, uh, I mean, it, it is a significant difference also between American cluster. I mean, we are doing this comparative study because we have this world largest aerospace cluster in Washington State. Uh, in this cluster, there are much more concerned the firms with the impact uh, on the pu public or collective goods, you know, on the region, than in the in the uh, in the states, in the Washington state. Um, however, uh, I mean the, the cooperation between public and uh, and the, the private uh, leaders is vital to to contribute to the, uh, the, 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 the values. What we learned, this is one of my collaborators, uh, also from, I mean, uh, we have excellent uh, economic geography department and I have several collaborators, but Spencer Cohen, it's another PhD graduate, made a study on the impact of this cluster and of course, because it was the debate, the state, to secure the future uh, production of 777X gave significant tax reduction up to 2030. So there was outcry or some other with the fair and so on. And then he looked back in the past, you know, because there were several types of... There's, the states are competing uh, for, for location. Uh, for 737 uh, Max uh, plane, I mean the Boeing plane, there were 28 states uh, competing. And I believe that over 20 or 30 uh, states competing for this one, you know, so that, that this is not just unique. But anyway, to, to answer briefly, one public dollar, but you know, you need to think that public dollar potentially, because this is the, from the future development, you know, you will tax. If you don't have development, you will not tax, you will not have that. But the, this is the opportunity cost, you know. So one dollar produced three and a half dollars 
in the value to the state in terms of jobs, uh, incomes, and the, the, the wealth infrastructure and so on. So it was pretty good return. So uh, it's important uh, then to keep, of course, uh, this is for cluster, there is important collaboration with the local uh, regional government to keep the human capital is the critic. We need to education system, training, apprenticeships, uh, all these elements are important and particularly also to deal with unemployment and so on. We have below 5% employment, unemployment in Washington State. So it was before this year and the last year was around 6, something. I mean, it's really, the, 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 this is the largest employer, the, 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 this cluster, in, in the, so it's really, uh, quite, quite, quite important uh, uh, elements. So, uh, but uh, the shared value we see also significant. You know, not only through charitable uh, uh, donations, but also through these building schools, building curricula. You know, contributing. You know, that type of voluntary work of this. So, we will try to catch up with the shared values. We, we are influenced also again by Porter Grammar that concept. You know. Well, I mentioned if capitalists should survive, it should focus on shared values, not just the financial values, you know. So we'll see whether it's happening. Just briefly, uh, Gary and I are interested in something which you call micro uh, Micro-grid. 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 Micro-grid.
And and I thought, then you know, I mean, like, this is the real thought about that. I thought, well, they should be the opposite, and the opposite is actually the place I'm living. Uh, it has a similar number of people living there, but somehow each supermarket chain has manifested itself in there with the consequences of you have hardly any other shops. You got a butcher, you got a bakery, you know, but that's about it. And from the feeling, it's really funny, you know, when you think about from a distance, what does it feel like? It, the, the place that I'm living in, you know, is feels slightly empty from the city structure in comparison to the village where Ian is, which really feels full. Yeah? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, of course, what you also see is the size of factors are actually architecture, city planning, yeah. and rules provided by the administration, you know, like the yeah. soft food yeah. movement, for example, so, you know, I mean, the good locations should be family enterprises, and the supermarket creeps out of the territory. Um, but, you know, I mean, like, what you've been describing is kind of the research. We could actually also use this to produce certain kinds of figures that, produ- that, that prove that the community, mm-hmm. where you've got many different actors uh, and many different types of shops, it means I go and buy my cheese in a cheese shop. It's yeah. classic in Switzerland. You know, I mean, I don't buy everything at the supermarket. Yeah? I mean, that you basically produce capital that could be sort of point over in, 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 a, in an economic value. Yeah. One could, could use this technology, uh, yeah. your methodology, uh, yeah. compared to yeah. competitors. Yeah, okay, well, Carl, thank you very much. Uh, you missed my first lecture when I was talking about cluster as network and uh, as an institution because they set the rules, the charters, rules and for This is exactly uh, moving in this direction. And uh, what, for instance, Boeing has one of the uh, activities and they say, we do not, I mean, it is break even, but they started a shop uh, making cables, uh, very important cables and uh, you know electricity is critical for the mother by disabled people they are giving jobs for disabled people and they are working you know with the highest part they they meet the highest standards so in the proximity of the, the facility i visited and i was so excited and they are so happy they had this type of reasonable uh, you know value added the jobs they are recognized, and this is the best way, you know, for rehabilitation of those of feeling, really. I mean, it's a good example of shared value. And then, you know, I mean, this is something what uh, is an example. We need to really popularize more that type of approaches of when there is a shared values, you know. We, we focus always, you know, on the negative side, the negative externalities. Of course, they are happening, you know. But also we need to balance, you know, that because many companies, you know, are trying to build a lot of common, I mean, shared values. Starbucks is doing a lot of this work, you know, in the community work and so on. This is, we see in uh, aerospace. But can I just... Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry, okay. Just one, one, one comment. You know, I mean, personally, I'm dreaming of a world where a large multinational corporations play a large role. Mm. And you know there are service providers and mm. providers of, 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 of goods that you just can't get any other way than through a large multinational network. Mm. But they are service to a community and the community is basically around mm. the smaller types of intermediate enterprises. That's what I'm just uh, mm. saying. Yeah, but you know the, the problem aerospace, let me just respond to you. I mean, the, we have interesting situation because we have duopoly in the la- terms of uh, large uh, uh, planes, Airbus and uh, Boeing. And uh, in the, this uh, middle body, you know, we have six companies. We have only holistic competition. So the issue is, you know, how those monopolists mm-hmm. civilize. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, the, the situation is also technological. This is very steep, very... A high entry capital cost to this industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to, you know, to be in a huge research and development, you know. So the, the small country, look, you know, Japan is producing the first 
middle-sized Japan, Japanese airplane, you know, and then where they are testing this, they are not testing in Japan, they are testing in Washington State. They build the facilities, you know, because they know that here is the experience, here is the knowledge, you know, and then they can experience. And besides that, you know, if they will get uh, American certification, you know, from NDA, so they will be able to sell and fly everywhere. So this is, you know, I mean, yeah, but, you know, we need to think about, you know, to, to civilize those, those guys the way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. It's a super plane in a pocket mom shirt, for Yeah. On the other side, you don't need a monoport on shirts. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly, 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 this is the point. Last March, uh, uh, I, in fact, in, in Ottawa, I was asked to explore the commons idea. Commons? Yeah. Since the commons idea yeah. is a kind of cluster idea. Yeah. And uh, with, with two dimensions to this traditional commons from antiquity. And then there's the notion of new domains of space, the digital commons, and a whole range of other things. And these raise interesting questions for the analogy between, uh, shall we say, emerging common structures and cluster structures of cooperation. And that's the mm-hmm. mm-hmm. The paper that I've yeah. in, uh, in the modern New York series. Okay, okay. I would like. Uh, we didn't give Rodika opportunity to ask. No, no, no. Um, I would like to go back to uh, the beginning, which is the definition and the measurement of uh, social capital, because um, being an uh, intangible asset is difficult both to define yeah. or to measure. So it's always subjective somehow and uh, uh, very generous and challenging at the same time um, to do it. Um, Regarding the definition, I would like somehow to see, consider the fact that we may approach social capital like a type, degree, and quality of community support to its own progress, basically. And uh, some have where uh, linked to the measurement, it has to go with something like defines the critical mass of this support. That will be a change to making a difference towards the positive or the negative evolving. Uh, I do not know how to do it, but I think it has to do something with the, this degree, uh, quality, and type. And going to measure, I felt a bit um, uncomfortable with the definition of. Uh, time invested in developing institutions. Um, I would rather go with quality time, because time by itself um, is not necessarily effective or efficient or involving in, in, in some due uh, quality or a target or attitude or mentality or substance, you know, meaningfulness. Tell me how to uh, measure quality of time. Well, I will buy it. I understand that. But then uh, it will link to, uh, it's like, you know, then it, the, the measuring the uh, uh, intelligence, cap- the, the intellectual capital, uh, you know, uh, even relational capital, which is a bit easier to do. It, it's all difficult to catch, so how, somehow we have to reach to uh, figures, numbers, uh, as you said. But uh, about quality, I would say quality time, like in family, you know, it's important to have quality time rather than just time. Um, and uh, it has to mean something. We will probably go further and analyze this and yeah. find some criteria and, you know, indicators. But then I would also like to go to that definition of romance who said... Um, that's uh, measured by the quality of institution. And now it raises my question to you or to Roman, okay, but how define quality of institution? It also has to come up with oh, yeah. of criteria yeah. and indicators and stuff, stuff like that. And in my view, 
a particularly this approach, uh, as well as with this time investing in developing institutions, basically goes back to having leaders, to having managers, which goes to the root, which is the education. The mission, the role, the substance, the meaningfulness, the awareness, the responsibility, and so on, of the educational process. Because this creates both leaders and specialists, and these are uh, contributing to the society's sustainable development, if that's the ultimate goal that we can go without. And last, um, I'll go with those um, indicators man mentioned by Roman, like uh, technical level, strength of association, trust, existing institutions, and results. These are all also just general. No, there are four groups of indicators. There are already 87 indicators, oh, okay. so I didn't want to, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, go because through, because like, we don't have time. I uh, mentioned the, okay. the very specific, and yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, all I wanted to mention, this idea of critical oh. mass, quality time, and then subjectiveness to everything. We have to go as uh, close to figures as possible, you know, like measurable measures. Yeah, thank you, Rodika. Uh, well, I, will, I, I wish I, you would give me the concrete solution how to mm. make the uh, quality of time and then we, we know that that, that, that you know we the goal of the research was not to have uh, general uh, assessment uh, development the general methodology of social uh, assessing social capital but in a particular in this case and then we want to have the discussion as we have today we applied only to aerospace class. Okay. So the, to this particular cluster, you know, and then it, it, it is uh, located in certain co communities, well, you know, they interact and so on, but we are not uh, assessing the social capital in communities. Okay. We are assessing, you know, where they are located in the region. We are assessing only within this particular cluster. So this is why, you know, I mean, we, we don't know. I mean, they have uh, evaluation of the training activities. They have uh, evaluation of the meetings, uh, monthly, annual meetings, and so on. Uh, it will come out, you know. I, I, I try to be very brief, and then we are still uh, working on the, what we are going to do. The third stage, we will present the conclusions from this research and uh, through participatory workshop. I mean, we will invite the, the, the leaders from each of these uh, uh, major segments and we will discuss with them and uh, building, we will be building action plan, you know, how to implement, how to improve the, the cluster and uh, the government and all these uh, supporting and related institutions to improve their the performance. So the, the problem with the performance, why we got money, because uh, I didn't say that. Uh, uh, in some cases, this European money will uh, spend uh, with 70 to, from 90 to 70 percent effectiveness. So Finns use 90 percent, Germans uh, uh, 80, the UK 75. But there were some countries which effectiveness was 25 percent of money spent on the cluster initiatives. France and Poland among them. They were also go worse even. Why? Because in Britain, uh, Germany, uh, in Britain I guess the support was only for 12 clusters, in Germany for 16, in Finland for 6 clusters. Mm -hmm. Why French supported 90 clusters, Poland 80 clusters, so they spread out mostly <laughs> as a political bargaining, you know, I mean that, because it came out. So, it was not much to do with the idea of the uh, economic cluster development. I am... One comment, one anecdote. Comment really is that it seems to me the concept of subjectivity is very important in what we should embrace and understand both 
as an economic phenomenon, but also as a social capital builder. And, uh, and that would suggest that it doesn't make sense for Boeing to build uh, planes all over the country in yeah. the villages. Mm -hmm. The role of subsidiarity is a, is a practical concept that would suggest you build planes mm -hmm. where it makes sense to build planes. Mm -hmm. But that you, you devolve authority, power, economic and social, to the lower, to as low as yeah, you can go. Exactly. And I don't think we've built up a concept around subsidiarity and maybe yeah. something that they develop. My anecdote is, you, in your presentation, you, you uh, talked about DC Grohat and the um, social capital work of the World Bank. I was actually managing that at the time, so I'm very <laughs> familiar with it. And my anecdote is that they did quite good work, in my view, interesting work, but we could never market it, we could never sell it. Yeah. We even tried, one of the things we did push for, because I was also managing work on fragile states and civil strife at the time, and we made the, what we thought was the plausible and rational case that if you're rebuilding uh, societies after civil strife and fragile economies, you must build social capital before you build energy. Yeah. Uh, all made sense, but what did we do? We invested in anything but the rebuilding of social capital. And so I think there is a, a marketing job to be done, if yeah. that's the right word, mm -hmm. on selling the, the value added yeah. and understanding of social capital yeah. in a manner that others, not just the sociologists, mm -hmm. can understand. My, my boss used to talk about the recycling of ignorance. Mm -hmm. There was a tendency yeah. in our social development yeah. department to sort of recycle yeah. yeah. ignorance. Yeah. They all felt quite good about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't sell it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's got to be an important part of, of your thinking mm -hmm. on social capital, is how do you sell it to, yeah. to others? Because yeah. I do think it's, it's important. Uh, I have a, a good colleague who's now working in humanitarian work mm -hmm. where they're looking exactly mm -hmm. at how to do surveys to actually restore yeah. social capital okay. at the time of humanitarian crises. And I think that's an interesting domain. Very much. Yeah. Thank you, Sasha. And just with a quick comment on, on the topic of quality of time, I think that the, the idea of measuring quality of time is a is, uh, uh, measure of productivity. Exactly. This indicator yeah. which means yeah. 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 which means a point of output uh, in time in yeah. which yeah. time yeah. So it's very clear and it's very basic. But the problem is taking our input output method is how far from each another input and output okay. measured in time and measured in space. So uh, and also all, all of that expressed in monetary units. Mm -hmm. That's the idea I'm thinking of. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know, I mean, uh, this, I mentioned these two names. There are students of Professor uh, Bill uh, Byers who applied the input output to the, the cluster analysis, you know, so yeah, this is what input output. Yeah. 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 But we know I'm I'm delighted, I'm delighted, delighted to get in touch with uh, the person who is working with so us. We would like to improve the survey. So we, we face serious problems how to translate, you know, and the, the, the surveys from Polish, not technically, but to the, the American culture. Terrible job, you know. I thought that I will do this within the week. It took us almost one month, you know, because we got the, the verification, the pilot, and so on. This, you know, it's different understanding, different attitude, you know. Just to, I'm sorry, just to, and also, I think that peace is very crucial. Social capital uh, thinking from the next Yugoslavia perspective. Yeah, oh yeah. They yeah. A lot of yeah, exactly, exactly, <coughs> exactly. This is exactly, I mean, what Ian said, this is a great idea. Before you invest in hardware, you invest in the, in the social capital to get people to know and then what they want and what would be their the role, you know. You know, speak, uh, I, I go back to he was, he was point. Uh, uh, he pointed that uh, our survival is the most important value. And in ex Yugoslavia region, there was uh, a question that the core value of our, uh, of our uh, I don't know, it's survivability. Mm. Life, 
So I believe it. So life is very cheap yeah. during that terrible period. Yeah. Such as in Ukraine and Russia and yeah. so on and so on. Yeah. So we are learning from our past experiences. Yeah. It's like market failures, you know. Every time the same situation, almost the same mm-hmm. reasons, but no solution for, for such a terrible This situation. notion of subsidiarity, I think, is what we should talk about. And I'm just thinking, I spent four years working with Yugoslavia mm-hmm. years ago uh, in my early days at the World Bank on the energy sector. And we did all of these cost systems planning for you, of Yugoslavia working with the, the federal organizations. And then, of course, reality is that Kosovo didn't trust, you know, mm-hmm. because there are all the different regions. What was the digital trust? And this, in this day and age, you can move, you can move economies of scale are not what they were. You can move down to a much lower level of organization yeah. than we've ever been able to. And yet we're still holding on to these concepts yeah, yeah, yeah. of economies of scale. Yeah. I think that that's, you know, yeah. former Yugoslavia is working perfectly well. Yeah. <laughs> I am very interested you know, in my lecture, first lecture, when I was uh, talking about uh, uh, networks and uh, using clusters and then uh, institutions, because networks as institutions with certain rules, I used uh, Leo Hurvich, uh Nobel Prize winner, uh, the, the three criteria of sustainability of the uh, institutions. First, incentive. Second, efficiency. And then third, subsidiarity. Period. Subsidiarity. This is very important and un- underestimated component. We really, I've been delighted to work on this because he always believed in decentralized economies, you know, all this and the way to the, the developing the market mechanism, you know, and it's, it's, it was always on it because I mean, see, you know, I, the big corporations sometimes behave like the big central planet economy and there is a lot of inefficiency there. So this is something what, you know, they, because they have a monopolistic position, it's easy for them to hide this cost. But being, you know, inside, you could see. I will stop talking about that. But uh, 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 not giving any examples. But uh, uh, but this is this is it's normal because uh, then the big corporations, you know, the hierarchical, it's far away from the uh, front line. I am teaching the inter cluster. So this is exactly a case how the management at certain point lost the touch with the reality and middle-level management saved the company. So, anyway, thank you.